Oh, hello. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Scout Squad. Let's go. So, the Scout Squad's a pretty simple team. Uh, nine operatives. Uh, you've got Infiltration and Recon as your two archetypes. I think you're going for Recon. Actually, I think the archetype choice is a bit rough for the Scout Squad, but we'll get onto that on the archetype page. I have a feeling that they do well with security. don't know. Like I say, you're a nine model team. You've got to take your sergeant. Your sergeant's got three options. You can have a shotgun and fists, a bolt gun and fists, or a bolt pistol and a chainsaw. First of all, he's the only model on the team that can take a chainsaw. Second of all, chainsaws are really cool, so you're going to take a chainsaw every single time. right? Then you've got eight models from the following list. So you'd be taking yourself a heavy gunner uh, with um, a heavy bolter, a heavy gunner with a missile launcher, the hunter, the sniper, the tracker, um, and then you still have to take three warriors, so three warriors. Now, there is some chat online about do you want to always take both heavy gunners? Um, and I can understand it because this may... You're going to have three operatives who pretty well are immobile, right? Your, your heavy gunners, both of them, and your sniper all want to sit tight, right, and shoot. And the thing is... At high level play, your opponent's not going to give you. They're not going to give you a shot. They're not going to give you a shot off. They might give you one shot in the game, maybe if they feel like they have to. But it it's really hard because one of those things where look, if you're playing against me, I'm probably going to wumble out and be like, oh, I'm probably safe here, and then you're going to be like, actually, no, I can just see you over this thing. It's fine. Like, because I don't still. Like I understand the rules. If I was going to take a test on the rules, and I could probably teach you the rules correctly, but when I'm actually in front of the, I don't, I can't explain it. When I'm in front of the game table, I'm just like, I'll just go over here, and then Zimba just looks at me and goes, "Right, okay, now I'm going to shoot you with this," and I'm like, "Whoa, okay, fine, I don't understand, but sure." Um, so, but if you're playing against people that actually like are, are good, it it's hard. To make those kind of static models really sing for you. On the other hand, if you have three of them, you know you can lock down quite a lot of the board. Do you know what I mean? Because you you got three of them looking out from three different places, so you're gonna end up being able to lock down quite a lot of the board. So I would certainly take them, but I, I have heard people sort of saying, "Hey, you know, does this team do better if you just load up on warriors?" I think it's one of those things where you'd have to tr play it, play with the heavy or heavies, and see how you feel after you've played with them. Anyway, let's get into the stuff and things. So their big ability, their faction rule, is forward scouting. I'll read it. Forward scouting. Central to the role of Space Marine scouts is ranging ahead of the strike force they're attached to, spending extensive periods laying traps for the foe, harassing enemy patrols, uh, gathering intelligence, and reconnoitering the ground in preparation for the chapter's assault force. At the end of the setup operative step, you can select and resolve to five forward scouting options. Each option has a number in the brackets, which is the maximum number of times you can select and resolve for the battle. Your five actions, for example, could be reposition, uh, triple arm, booby trap, and diversion, right? With taking two repositions, okay? Uh, if both players have the rule, you alternate resolving selection by selection, starting with the player with initiative. So, okay, let's go through with them. Redeploy. Uh, you take this once, and it allows you to change the setup of a third of your operatives rounding up. <sighs> I would really struggle to um, to use this. I, I I don't know if if people who are really good at the game would would be would be useful good using this, but I feel like you have nine models, and on a lot of setup tables, there's only going to be so many places where you're going to put those models where they're not standing in the open anyway. So. Uh, yeah, I get it. You can move a third of your models, like you could move your first third after you'd seen where your opponent's total setup was. But I don't... Um... The only time I think you're going to use this is because you ha don't have to commit to what you're, what you're choosing until the operatives are set up. If you look at the table and you go kind of, oh, no, I've just seen a thing where his, like, um, you know... Uh... The, the, the chaos, the, the legionary librarian has got like an instant shot on me in the first turn. Uh, and then you, you, you can redeploy and you might use it there. But I don't think you're ever planning to use this, but you, you can put it out as an emergency. 
reposition. You take twice, and it gives you uh, well, two of the... Um, well, I'll read it. Perform a free reposition action with one friendly operative that's wholly within your drop zone. It must end the move wholly within three inches of your drop zone. So it's going to give you two um, pre-game dashes, the same as in the scouting phase, those those three inch, six inch, three inch moves. Given that you have three heavy guns, potentially your sniper, your heavy bolter, and your missile launcher, you know, you can use both of these, plus potentially the one from the, depending on what the train setup's like, plus potentially the one from the scouting uh, deck to if you want to do it that way to get your three things into a position where they can where they don't have to spend turn one moving where they can sit up there and be a threat um from the very start of the game which i think is valuable so i think you're often going to end up taking this even if you don't use it on those heavies getting your other your close range models further up the board is is, is probably a good thing uh we've got triple arms you take these twice Place one of your triple arm markers more than six from your opponent's drop zone during the first and second turning point whenever a friendly scout squad operative is shooting an enemy operative within two of the marker. Its ranged weapons have the seek weapon rule. In the ready step of the third strategy phase, remove the marker. It could be really strong if it wasn't for that six-inch exclusion zone around your opponent's drop zone. Really, you're only getting them onto, you know, the, 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 the mid-board and your side of the board. And it's like, yes... If you could, you know, turning off some of the easily accessible vantage points that your opponent's going to have, effectively, like, would be a really powerful ability. But I think these are quite hard to use just because of the, the six-inch thing and the fact that they don't last for the whole game. So even if there's a really nice vantage point in the middle of the table, you put a marker in it, well, they're not going to be in their turn one anyway, so it's only really turn two that we're talking about. And then, is that going to, I don't know, I just, I don't see them being that good. But obviously, let me know in the comments if I'm high and the triple arm is really good. Booby trap feels quite good to me. So place one of your booby trap markers more than six from your opponent's drop zone and more than two from other markers and access points. And as per the FAQ, also accessible terrain, which is the doors on uh, Volcus and all of the platforms on Beta Decima. First time booby trap marker is within an enemy operative's control range, remove the marker, inflict 2d3 damage on that operative. If it isn't incapacitated, you end its action, if any, even if the action's effects aren't fulfilled. If it can't be placed, you move it the minimum amount to do so. So this is really good in a lot of ways. Um, don't hurt your guys, right? It's literally, if an enemy moves into it, you inflict 2d3 damage on that operative. So you're, you can have guys standing right next to the marker, on top of the marker. It doesn't affect your movement. And your use of the board, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, I guess because it's not necessarily an explosion. It could be like a, a, a punji trap or, or, or another kind of fun, like, mechanical booby trap that your scouts know is there. And therefore, they know not to trip the trip wire and not to, not to fall into the, the spike pit or whatever it is. Um, I think it's a little bit hard to use well because it can't be within two inches of other markers so you can't just plunk it on the middle objective right uh and you can't put it near doors or access points but on on volkers you've got quite a few like main boulevards main roads that appear on on most of the maps so it could still be really useful depending on the map i think it's one that i definitely want to consider when i look at the map I, I, i'm probably taking those two repositions and then booby traps one that i'm i'm looking at um we're going to go for diversion. So once per battle, strategic gambits like one enemy operative within six of a kill zone edge until the end of that operative's next activation. It's minus one APL. <sighs> the minus one APL is, is, is fun, but it's like... It depends on what the edges of your board look like. I guess if you're playing on beta decima, right? Keep bringing it up, even though it's probably irrelevant. you got those two big corridors down either edge of the board, like round the, round the community pool. Uh, you're probably going to get somebody there, and then you can go, ha ha, your minus one APL this turn. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, device plan is a CP. I'm, I'm, all, I'm a simple man. I'm always going to take this. It's a CP. It's easy to remember. It's done. It's on. It doesn't require me to think about how I'm going to use it beyond thinking about how I'm going to make use of that CP. Designate target. Select one enemy operative to gain one of your target tokens. Whenever a friendly scout squad operative is shooting against, fighting against, or retaliating against uh, an enemy operative that has one of your target tokens, you can re-roll one of your attack dice. I think you may as well have this. I, I, you know, um, 
it's pretty much a free buff um, that your opponent can't really play around and do anything about, other than, you know, assuming that you put it on somebody that your opponent will not want to hide away at the back and not put in harm's way, right? You get to pick the targets. You're going to pick somebody that's one of their big striker pieces, right? That's going to be getting into harm's way anyway. And then you put this on it and you're like, cool. Uh, free reroll, you know, it's not the the be all end all of buffs, but it's not a bad thing. And then spy, uh, you can force them to reveal their tack up. I it's probably some really like top tier players that are like yeah, this is the one, this is the one. I personally, I just don't feel like I have enough big enough brain that I would get any use out of this at all. Like I'd be like, oh cool, they're going for something secure center line, great. I. You're not going to play any differently. I, I don't know. For me, uh, I'm probably going to go most games. If I'm playing these, I'll go for reposition, reposition, device plan, right? Uh, th those three are kind of nailed on, okay? And then I'm looking at designate target and probably booby trap, but possibly diversion. But probably we're going to go for reposition, reposition, device plan, designate target, and booby trap. That's my call. Um... The ones I'm thinking of to potentially sub around from those is is diversion. Maybe you see that that's that's come nice synergy. So maybe on beta decimal we drop booby trap and we put in diversion because of diversion they're far more likely to hang around at the edges on beta decimal and booby trap's going to really struggle to be placed down, um, not within two of any of the the raised platforms. Well, you could also put it on the edges, right? So yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on that. Again. If you beg to differ, please beg to differ in the comments. Love, I love, I love to see the engagement. Let's have a look at the strategy ploys. Gorilla engagement. Space Marine scouts learn to use terrain to their advantage, preventing the enemy from getting a bead on them as they move within killing range. Whenever an enemy operative is shooting a friendly scout operative, if that friendly operative is in cover and more than six from uh, operatives it's visible to, you can reroll one of your defense dice. So this is all right. Uh, it feels like an okay buff, but it it's actually pretty limited when you think about it. Because if you are in cover, right, and they are more than six inches away, if it's turning point one or turning point two, you're probably on hostile anyway, so you're not being shot, right? Um, if it's turning point three. They're probably within six. So I just don't know how often you're going to have the board state to um, to be using this. Like, if I'm missing something, let me know. But it feels a bit like on an initial read, it's great. And then it's like, just just how often is that combination of you're in cover, you're, you're not on conceal, so you're being, you're being shot. Um, and they're more than six from you. I don't know. Now, Gunfire Ambush, I'll read, and then I'll read Blade Ambush, and then I'll talk about both. So, Gunfire Ambush. Scout squads utilize stealth uh, to close rate, st stealth to close within range of their foes, carefully set their targets, and unleash a devastating barrage of bolt rounds and shotgun slugs. Whenever a friendly scout squad operative is shooting through its activation, if its order was changed from conceal to engage at the start of the activation, or it wasn't visible to enemy operatives at the start of the activation, which is um, an interesting little caveat, its range weapons are balanced, and if their target is expended, uh, its range weapons have ceaseless instead. This is nice. It's a nice little buff. Um, we'll look at blade ambush as well. At times when stealth is of the utmost importance, the blade is preferable to the bolter and just as deadly. Whenever a friendly scout squad operative is fighting during its activation, if its order was changed from concealed to engage at the start of the activation, or it wasn't visible to enemy operatives at the start of the activation, its melee weapons have ceaseless, and if its target is expended, the melee weapons have rending. Um, these are your big turning point two, like, go loud style ploys, right? you you're going to try and position a little bit in turning point one or conceal. Then in turning point two, you're looking to flip order and, and kill stuff. You're going to put both of these on, I should think. You know, your team is pretty much half shooting. Um, and the way I would run it, more on that in a minute, but it's half shooting, half combat sort of team. So you're probably going to want to do both of them. The bad thing is they, they're they probably only really that usable, depending on how you play. Some people don't go loud turning point two now. They go loud turning point three. Like I've heard that a bit as well. Uh, people say, oh, well, turning point one, you basically skip 
skip, 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 stay where you are. Turning point two, you sort of position a little bit. And turning point three is, is the big go loud turn. My games aren't panning out like that, but I don't know. The meta of how the game's played. But whichever way you slice it, you're going to have a turn, which is your big killing turn. You're going to probably pop both these things on that turn. But then you'll have flipped to conceal to engage, and therefore you'll still be on engage, and therefore you're probably not going to use these again. Um, unless you have lots of guys who you can see who aren't visible to other guys, right? Stealth relocation. Space Marine scouts are highly mobile units, shifting quickly from cover to cover in order to outmaneuver the foe. Select one friendly scout squad operative, more than six from enemy operatives. You can immediately perform a free dash action with that operative and or change its order. You can't use this ploy during the first turning point. So, yes, it it's strategy ploy, but it is only affecting one guy. Okay. You get a free dash or you can flip your order. It, it's it's pretty okay. And it's a great tool. I don't think it will always come up, but there are times when it will come up, if you can remember and hold in your mind that you have it, uh, where it, it could come in and be real key ability. So I think the strategy ploys are good, but there's nothing you really want to use in turning point one. And there's nothing that you like, aside from the term when I'm using both the ambush ploys. I quite happily go most of the game without using many of these strategy ploys, I think. Uh, I don't think they're particularly like strong. And in a way, that's a good thing. It always sucks when you go through a team and you're like, wow, all the ploys are amazing and you just know that you'll have no CP. So in a way, like this is going to sound bizarre, in a way, having slightly weak strategy ploys is pretty cool because it feels like you don't have to bake in, well, I'm going to want this and this and this nearly every turn. So there's that, I suppose. But I, I like... Gunfire Ambush and Blade Ambush, certainly. You're going to use those every game. Um, the others, yeah, they'll, 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 they'll come in when they come in. Let's look at the Firefight ploys. I think this is where you spend your CP on, on this team. It, it's a very Firefight ploy uh, team. It looks that way to me anyway. So, a Star Ace Training. Space Marine chapters are among the galaxy's most elite fighting forces. Even their near fights wield their weapons with peerless skill. Use this firefight ploy during a friendly scout squad operative's activation. Until the end of the activation, the operative can either perform two fight actions or two shoot actions if a shotgun, bolt pistol, or bolt gun is selected for at least one of them. So you have... Um, your sergeant has this natively. He has the shoot twice, fight twice thing natively. And he has three APL. While your sergeant's alive, he can make another of your operatives 3 APL. So I would suggest often you're going to end up using this on that other 3 APL operative if you feel yourself needing to shoot twice or fight twice. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that you don't need to do it at the start of the activation as well. So if you see like, oh, you know, my plan was to... Uh, charge fight and then do an objective and if you charge and fight and then everyone's still alive and you see that you need to fight twice you can go okay cool i spend a cp to fight again that's pre pre good uh really useful tool yeah raw physiology Though their training may not yet be complete, Space Marine Scouts possess the same genetically augmented resilience as their battle brothers. Use this firefight ploy during a friendly scout squad operative's activation. Until the start of his next activation, you can ignore any uh, changes to the operative's stats from being injured, including its weapons stats. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, transhuman physiology, but just for one of your models for one CP. You know, when you need that, you've got 10 wounds. Being... Uh, Injured is a thing that's going to happen to this team. And so when you have that injured model that needs to make that key ploy, you're going to be glad that you have this, I think. Emboldened Aspirant. Surgical enhancement, indoctrination, and brutal training instill within a space marine near fight the confidence and determination to battle powerful foes. Use this firefight ploy when a friendly scout squad operative performs the fight or shoot action. At the start of the roll attack dice step, if it's the friend, first friendly operative to perform either one of those actions, so fight or shoot, during this turning point, or if the enemy operative in that action uh, has a higher wound stat than it, friendly scout squad operative, its weapons have the severe weapon roll until the end of the action. So what's really good about this is that you can roll the dice, because severe guarantees you a crit. If you hate, if you didn't already get one, so you can roll the dice and go, oh, I got a crit, don't need to spend a CP, but you can roll the dice and say, oh, I haven't got a crit, cool, I need a crit, spend a cp get a crit right now what's really cool with this is if we just go back to um blade ambush 
if you happen to find yourself in the position where you are meleeing someone having flipped i mean i realize it's a bit of a rube goldberg machine but if you happen to be in the position where you're meleeing someone having flipped from concealed to engage and the person you're meleeing happens to have already gone and so they are um you know they they are expended then you have rending so you can go from a throw for one cp you could potentially go from a throw with no crits in to a throw with two crits in right because then the crit from severe would let you use rending to guarantee a second crit which is pretty cool i like that one um now you do like the first fight of the game you roll you get a crit this would be useless if you're not playing against an elite team you have burned the opportunity to use this but you haven't spent the cp so that's okay covert position space marine scouts excel at camouflaging themselves lying in wait for hours or even days until they end to find the perfect moment to strike use this firefight ploy during a friendly scout squad operative activation until the start of its next activation it's super concealed it's it's all been normalized now it's it's super concealed we'll just say super concealed super conceal at will on whichever model you would like is is pretty good like yeah again i think all of these firefight ploys really strong they hand out really useful buffs that you will make good use out of to different individuals at different times i think you're spending the bulk of your cp on this team in the firefight ploy uh section so let's start with the sergeant so the sergeant is apl3 even though the team is generally apl2 move six four up safe 11 wounds the team generally has uh apl uh, uh 10 wounds sorry so you could have a shotgun or a bolter and be exactly the same as your scouts or you could have a cool chainsword and a bolt pistol so the chainsword's five dice hitting on threes four fives pretty good right i mean it's not a power sword it's not going to set the world on fire but i'm going to take it anyway for rule of cool okay um while you're alive you can uh give one of your other scouts that is visible to you a bonus to its apl which is pretty good it doesn't cost you an apl to do that either which is pretty good and you have a start ace so you can shoot five shoot shoot twice or fight twice and you can counteract uh on on, on conceal as well which is pretty funny um because he's a space marine that's why he's got a mustache he's just a space marine in the kitty armor right there we go heavy gunners heavy gunners so you're not choosing don't have to weigh them up you need your heavy bolter and your missile launcher you want them okay uh gonna do the weird thing of some of the equipment uh so you can have a bipod if you take the bipod with one of your equipment points both your heavy bolter and your missile launch if you don't move at all or if you're counteracting you have ceaseless um that's pretty good if you already have ceaseless you gain relentless why would you already have ceaseless i hear you ask well of course the gunfire ambush can potentially give you ceaseless so if you're shooting an expanding target right with gunfire ambush on then i suppose you have learned that you um that you can now use your that you've now gained uh relentless which is pretty good so it's just going to guarantee you get your hit through so if your opponent does give you a nice shot then it's more likely to not whiff which is pretty great uh so i was taking the heavy gunners i would always take the bipod i think i would take the heavy gunners at least for the first couple of games to try because i've heard this thing from people who are better players than me going oh yeah but you don't if you don't take the heavy gunners you got more guys and the guys be pretty good but 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 right a crack missile is pretty good a crack missile in the right place four dice hit on threes bags of re-rolls five seven piercing one heavy bolt has got piercing crits one four five five die like they're good guns and yes they're not very mobile you can dash and then shoot and then you don't get your bipods benefit i think again it's one of those things if you're playing against someone who's pretty good at the game on volcus there's a lot of terrain it's quite I don't know i always seem to get shot because i just suck at kill team but it is quite easy at least in theory to avoid being shot by things um i would have thought but again you've got your both heavy gunners and your sniper so you you you're covering off quite a lot of the table and that's got to have some strength to it i would have thought so i'd want to play it and see um because i think for me they're too cool they're too cool to leave at home right you got your tracker so your tracker 
this has got the the stat line that we're going to basically see for all of the all of the scouts um lock to a bolter which isn't the best uh he's not going to be shooting it that often though because he's quite often going to be moving and then turning on track enemy unless you give him the extra apl with the sergeant then he can do a bolter shot as well um not track enemy track enemy is not that great right track enemy gives uh your entire team seek light against somebody within eight which sounds amazing but um it's not that much light cover on volcus that's the problem that i have or on into the dark or there's just not that much light cover in the game at the moment right it, you know there's a li little bit but there's just not that much light cover so what the real use of him is is all spec scan i think so uh you, you know until the start of this object's next activation or until it is incapacitated whenever a friendly scout squad operative is shooting an enemy with an eight of this operative notice that you don't have to be have visibility to them you just have to sit there um and it's all enemies in the eight inch bubble right that enemy operative cannot be obscured which and if you're shooting with a sniper that's currently using the optics action, then instead you can also have seek light, which I think that is the aspect scan is pretty good. Uh, you, you know, you're going to use it to try and get shots. With you know, you're going to be moving this guy up, trying to get places where he can enable shots from your heavy bolter and from your missile launcher, uh, where where maybe people are relying on. Well, I'll be obscured here. You know, night lords need to watch out, especially, right? Because they tend to stand in the open, relying on their obscured to keep them alive. And it's like, well, I can turn off obscured in quite a large area now, fellow. So that that's pretty good. Hunter. So he's a little bit of a weird one. Um, he's got his combat blade, four dice sitting on threes, three, five. We're going to buff that to four dice sitting on threes, four, five with equipment that i'm going to show you in a minute okay he's got his grapnel launcher so he counts the first vertical distance as two inches and then his grapnel assault so when he charges if he climbs drops or jumps or his base moves underneath vantage during the action his melee weapon gets lethal three up um which is pretty funny so you're always looking for ways to like curve his charge line to build in a little bit of a climb there or, or 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 something like that or just to swerve him under a roof right and then back out again just so you can uh, have the really powerful lethal three ups so it means that all your three ups are hits or are crits which is pretty amazing um you know he can do some serious damage uh in in combat because he's got 10 wounds as well so we probably can take you know uh a couple of hits right punching up punching up into stuff killing it killing it killing a space marine right with three crits potentially potentially well, parries exist phil but you know they might not roll any crits it's not unreasonable to think that a uh you know like an intercessor doesn't roll any sixes um and the scout sniper just one of the best snipers in the game it's it's if you like a sniper there you go You've got a sniper rifle, it, just, it never stops working. It's like the Space Marine sniper, it never stops working. It's fine, it's good. And also like the Space Marine sniper, you can, for one AP, you can turn off um, Obscured. That's nice. And you've got the Camo Cloak, so you can ignore Saturation. So you're, yeah, you've only got two APL, but you just don't, you don't really care. You, you, can't, you can't fight twice like the Space Marine sniper, but other than that, you've got the same sniper as the, uh, the Intercessors have, which is pretty cool. Two less wounds, I guess, but still pretty cool. I would always, 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 always take... Like, where I was wavering on the heavy gunners, I think the sniper's excellent. Um, just because... Can I justify that? Because it's the same thing, right? Your opponents can hide from this stuff. But just because it's so comprehensively, when you can turn off obscuring as well, you can just so comprehensively, like, turn off... Like, no, you're not coming up here. You're not coming up this lane figure something else out it's just whether you want to like i think dedicating one model to that job is good dedicating three models to that job might be overkill but i would try it anyway yeah yeah that's my feeling on the matter then we got a warrior so the warrior i had a little bit more to chat about the warrior so warrior's got a choice of guns a star stage shotgun the bolt pistol and the car blade and the bolt gun so i feel like we can write off the bolt gun right because to weigh them up together the bolt gun you're giving up the combat blade 
to gain shots outside of eight inches. Not worth it. Now it's worth weighing up with these the faction equipment combat blades and knives. So you can spend an equipment point and give your warriors all combat blades. So you go combat blade and shotgun. But the same equipment point. First of all, it's confusing. The combat blade from the equipment. So if you're upgrading from fists to the combat blade using the equipment, you're only getting a three attack version of the combat blade. So it's three attacks, it not three, three, five. Um, I feel like these are very much... The TLDR is I rate the the with the equipment, the combat knives, right, four attacks, it not three, four, five. Uh, I think it's worth taking the bolt pistol to, to access that combat knife. I think that's good. I think the 8-inch bolt pistol does the job. Okay. Um, you know, you're more likely to get shots in with that than you are. I think, yeah, I can recognise that the shotgun's hitting on 2s and not 3s, and that's good. And the shotgun's got an extra point of normal damage, and that's good. Uh, but it has got 2 inches of less range, and I can get a combat knife that's really good so for me to so my way of thinking i think we're gonna go pistol and blades and we're gonna nail on this equipment point and we're not gonna bother with the shotguns but i'm totally prepared for people to shout at me in the comments to tell me that i'm wrong uh as i keep saying catchphrase not actually very good at kill team what i'm good at i suppose is explaining things um like i and passing the rules for you so i hope that i have some value there uh but personally i i like that i i definitely can see even in my um sort of not being the best at this game like the bolt gun is not worth taking i would i totally write that off and then yeah the shotgun is more reliable it is but you just you've got to close quite close and then not want to be in combat particularly i feel like it's a bit counterproductive also not to be glossed over you get free uh utility grenades so you can just throw a smoke and a stun every turn if you want, right? Um, from 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 your warriors, not from, uh, not from the not. Wait, well, in theory, it could even be from the same warrior. I think you could throw a smoke. You could do each of the following once per turning point. Yeah, you could just have 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 smoke to your heart's content without spending a equipment on it, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty good. It's gonna help you move up the table. Let's have a look at that equipment. So we've already looked at two of them. We looked at the combat blades and knives and the heavy weapon bipod. I think you're always taking those things. I also think you're always taking the camo cloak. Let's look at that. So crafted from light manipulating materials such as camoline, camo cloaks help the bearer blend into surrounding terrain. Whenever an operative is shooting a friendly scout squad operative, excluding the sniper, if you can retain any cover saves, you can retain one additional cover save, and this isn't cumulative with advantage train. I think this is really good. You're a four up save team. Um, so being able to have cover and retain two saves just on your whole team is going to hopefully keep you alive for a lot longer. Uh, so I would always take Camo Cloak. I'd always take the Blades and Knives. I'd always take the Bipod. Uh, the one I might drop is the Targeting Oculars. So Targeting Oculars... Uh, these highly sensitive multi-spectral targeting visors serve to aid the bearer's aim, rendering their weapons even more lethal. Once per turning point, when a friendly scout squad perform, is performing a shoot action and you're selecting a valid target, you can use this rule. And until you do, uh, until the end of the action, your ranged weapons have saturate, which is the old ignores cover. Like, it's not bad. Like, saying, oh, you know, he uh, over there, you know, oh, you've given my, you've given my missile launcher a, a, a shot cool well i'll have saturate as well just to just to just really try and nail that on um so yeah no going all four faction equipment isn't bad but targeting oculars i think is the weakest equipment point and it's the one if you look at the table and you're like i need ladders i need ladders i need a barricade and you don't want to put your scouting action on getting the fifth equipment piece i think the oculars are the one that you can afford to drop but like all four faction equipment is very short of being wrong it's not wrong uh, at all um, I just, you know, and you don't need to go utility grenades as well because you got them for free on, on only on certain war, but on three of your models, so you don't need to go utility grenades either. So it quite often you can go all four, but I just sometimes look at the table and go, I'm on ladders. <laughs> I won't go up there uh, with my sniper or, or whatever it is. Okay. Tac ops. I I think these are hard. 
for this team to achieve their attack ops? I do. Um, they're very thematic choices. Like they shouldn't have security, right? Understood. But like, okay, wiretap's just bad. Um, I think, right? Because people can just avoid your markers. So wiretap's just bad. Implant and surveillance are very scorable, but you are a you're not an elite team. You're nine models, and but you find it really hard. I like the knife scouts. I think they're really cool, but I don't think that unless you're playing against a seven wound team, and even then you're unlikely to have the hits to burn on doing implant, right? It, if you see what I'm saying, you're unlikely to be like, no, I, you're going to want to kill people dead. You know, and it, with implant, you, you, you don't want to kill the person either. Uh, I just don't quite. I just don't quite. Right. I don't quite see it. And the surveillance then. Sure. It means staying on conceal. Maybe you can do surveillance because you are. If you're taking knife guys, and they won't necessarily have a shot anyway, so they're going to move up, they're going to surveil, and then they're going to try and charge next turn, hopefully. But yeah, it's dodgy. I think it's dodgy. Um, I'd be much more inclined to go for recon. Um, so plant beacons is pretty reliable. Yes, you're burning AP, and you're a two AP team, and so you're spending an a you're spending um, three AP uh, over the course of of the of the map to um no six ap right over the course of the game to try and max your uh your vp which is a lot right understood but it, it is there as a standby it's usually something that can be done confirmed kill could be nice for this team if you're you know you're taking the knife guys the way i, I suggest that you probably want to play them uh, you, you're moving up the board. If you're going to kill people in combat anyway, then confirm kill can be reasonably easy to do, and you don't necessarily have to, um, or you don't have to spend AP to score that one. So I quite like confirm kill. I think that's what I'd try. There is the question of whether it's doable against elites, but, but basically the, the TLDR of this team is. It's pretty cool and pretty good and pretty balanced, and it tries to play into any space marine team. And it's like, what do I do? Because I'm not killing a 14 wound marine unless they wander into the line of sight of my missile launcher, right? Like, there's a lack of tools there uh, to, to, to get rid of those marines, which are currently dominating the meta. So, if you're going to go to an event where you're going to expect a high degree of marines, you're going to have a bad day. And I, and I think you're going to try plant beacon because you want to try and score some points that aren't relying on trying to kill those big marines right what's nice is there are one box teams so you just buy the box and away you go um you know and you just buy it and build it you even got a spare model build like i would build three three knife guys right i would build a shotgun guy uh in case you turn out to want shotguns I'd build the leader with the chainsword, and then I'd build, just like they have all the specialists. So basically, i build it exactly like we've built it on here, except these two pointless bolter guys, they'd be knife and bolt pistol guys, and that'd be how i build my box. Uh, you might want to not build that last guy, because it's possible they're going to give them ten models again. They had ten models previously. And then maybe you want four knife guys. Who can say? Right? I like knife guys. You might like shotgun guys. That's it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, so, how good is this team, really? I understand they're not well regarded at the moment by the great and the good of the Kill Team Burst. I quite like them. Probably just even more... I realise it's depressing, but it's probably just even more attested to me not understanding the game. But I quite like them. The reason I quite like them is because I think they're quite simple. Right? They're pretty robust. They... They, 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 they do stuff. The strength that they have is largely on their, their data sheets with, with uh, you know, some pretty good, solid, uh, pretty, like, you don't have to set too much up. Yeah, okay, you've got the all-specs guy who's trying to set something up with your heavy gunners. 
but your half team hanging back covering your back line you've got your knife guys and your and your leader skirmishing forwards and then your one all specs bolter guy in the middle i think it's a pretty straightforward team um so i quite like them but i'd love your take on just how powerful they are because i know they're not well regarded i'd also love your takes on how you would equip your warriors if i'm mad for not like i've got this team and it's a team that i want to get around to building at some point so if you want to come into the chat or the comments and be like no fill you fool shotguns then I'll, I'll listen to you right i get the feeling that maybe it's one of these things where it's like oh if you're playing against uh these kinds of teams you know like lower wound teams you want to take the knives if you're playing against marines you've got to take shotguns and try and dance around them somehow um and that's i do have an extra scout and I, I might even have an extra couple of scouts from when they were giving away scouts for free. So potentially I could do that and have uh, options, options, options. Maybe that's the play. Who can say? Heavy gunners, you taking them? You leaving them? Um, I just saw some stuff on YouTube recently from people who are good at the game saying, oh yeah, the problem is I don't take heavy gunners. But prior to me watching that, I would never even have considered leaving the heavy gunners behind. But I... I do have these experiences from having played four games, five games now against Zimbad, who is, you know, he's a better player than me, uh, and is relentlessly on Volcus, where there's so much heavy terrain. It is relentlessly hard, even if you're up on a vantage point, it is relentlessly hard to really get shots um, ever. You know, you know, like, there's a couple of maps where one of the one of the uh, points is quite open right um but it's it is it is relentlessly difficult to get shots unless your opponent lets you have them uh which means having people that can't move and then shoot to like get round and flank round, because constantly you want it to flow round and flank round and try and get shots from the side because firing down the the, the plane of the board always feels like a bit of a non-starter. Um, you know, unless where they could be good, if you could have security and then you could say, well, you've got to come in to me. Um, and then actually on a lot of tables there aren't that, you know, if you're forcing them to try and come up to your deployment zone, probably they have to come in and get close enough to your guns that you could shoot them. But with the way that you have to play with these without security, then mm, I don't know. I go back. Let me know what you think. Maybe there's a shower thoughts video in this concept of like how useful is how useful actually is shooting anyway. Like how useful actually is long range shooting. I mean, a, a melter gun or a plasma gun or something you can move first, your full six inch move, and then shoot is still very useful. But how useful really are these immobile weapons? I don't know. I'm pondering it at the moment. Um, which is the thing ah, that puts me off scouts maybe a little bit. Because maybe the tools are just leading you down a direction that in the current Volcus-based meta, it's not a great direction to go down. Uh, that could be the case. But then, like, what... Just rambling now, I'm sure. But, like, what sort of team is really ideal then oh I mean, the answer is obvious isn't it you take a marine team <laughs> stupid stupid question you take a marine team which can have you know a melter gun or a plasma gun that if you want to be a bit weird with it right you probably don't take wish i remember the games that i'd watch from worlds don't remember any of those legionary players really going for the heavy bolter or the missile launcher right you probably want mobile firepower and combat guys. And so a team that isn't made up of mobile firepower and combat guys is probably going to... What kind of team do you want? It's a marine team, Phil. I'm being really stupid. Right, on that bombshell of my own sort of momentary lapse in uh, remembering the meta game that we're actually in. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for putting up with me. I'm sorry I didn't get a video out yesterday. I'm, I'm slipping. I really am. Um... Thank you to all of my members, uh, especially the people that financially support me every single month for some reason. Um, especially to Compendium Lover, who supports for an absurd quantity of money every month. But the channel's just that. 
this is just that good. Um, but thank you also to our, all my subscribers. That subscriber number is ticking up glacially slowly, but surely. Uh, and thank you to just all the people that say, hey, love the content, enjoy it. Love the Snorlax, uh, the, the Snorlax Udi. That makes people happy as well, um, apparently. So that's good. Uh, making people happy is what it's all about. Um, and yeah, Lord of the Rings. Has anybody pre-ordered that? This I'm just going to tuck this in right at the end of a video that it's not related to. For those people that are watching this in a month's time because they care about Scouts, why am I asking about Lord of the Rings? Because today was the day to pre-order the new Lord of the Rings edition. Has anybody gone in for that? Let me know in the comments. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. 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 Cheery. Bye.